Bible says there's a cloud of witness. The cloud of witnesses, they're cheering you on. They're looking at you and they're saying, you can do this. You got this. Pastor Adeolu said something a couple of weeks ago that David stood before Goliath. And he said, that, that really knocked me out. He said, David had everything in him to fight Goliath. I, I, felt, I thought that was so profound because David was just anointed king. We don't know how many days before, but he was just recently anointed king and he comes to a place and he sees, again, David sees what God is seeing. He comes into a place and he looks at, he looks at the, 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 um, the army, Saul's army. And then he looks at Goliath's army, he looks at Goliath, and he thought to himself, how dare Goliath, how dare Goliath stand against the people of God? How dare him? And God wants us to, to come into that place where we look at situations in our lives, where we look at circumstances, where we look at things, and we say, how dare you? How, like, what audacity? you have to speak against the people the child of god and you don't just come into it that's why god tells joshua do not let this book do not let this book do not let it depart from your lips so i'm saying to you people study it day and night day and night day and night it's food to your spirit it's important that you know the word of god so that you can fight so that you can put on the right armor you cannot let me stop there give you an example god revealed himself to abraham and he said to abraham the level of intimacy with god and abraham is also mind-blowing because he reveals to Abraham that I will bless you Abraham and your seed you won't be able to count it they will be like the dust of the earth but for 400 years at some point your people will be held in captivity but then again they will be held in captivity but I the Lord would deliver them and I would not only de deliver them they would leave that nation with great wealth that word was given to Abraham and from studying the word we know that um, we know that in the New Testament, we know that the scribes and everything, they wrote prophecies down. They knew the word. The Pharisees, they knew the word, right? They knew the word because it was written and they could compare it. When Jesus, you know, when um, the King Herod, um, when Jesus was born, he had heard the prophecy that the king will be born in Nazareth, Bethlehem, sorry, Bethlehem. And he knew the word. So we know that when God gives you a word, also, just, just fo sorry, just follow me, right? God gives you a word, write it down. Um, what I know Abraham did was he passed it on from generation to generation. He passed it on that, listen, at some point in life, you will be in captivity for 400 years. And that's why I always say this, that when God gives you a word, it's beyond you. It doesn't start with you and it's not going to end with you. The Bible says that he was God. He is God and he will continue to be God. So he gives you a word. It does not start with you. Like the word is not for you. It's for... It's not just for you. It's for a whole generation. Because we know that down the line... The people of God found themselves in Israel. The people of God found themselves in Egypt, I beg your pardon. And in Egypt, they were enslaved. The Bible says that the God of this world has blinded the minds of his people, has blinded the minds of believers. 
And it also says that we do not know the word. Those who do not know the word will perish like mere mortals. So it's so important that you know the word. The Bible says in Exodus 1 that the people of God, the Israelites, they were growing in numbers and they were getting stronger and stronger. But guess what? They didn't see it. Pharaoh saw it and Pharaoh was scared. When Pharaoh saw it, he, he thought to himself, if these people continue this way, <laughs> they will finish us, they will join another army and then they will kill us all. Just imagine if the Israelites knew that they were stronger than Pharaoh. No, no amount of slavery would have held them bound. But we know that they were bound. Because what? The word of God. They had lost sight of the word of God. Because even when Moses came, Moses came to him. Moses came to them to deliver them based on God's instruction. Not the first time, the second time. They were like, who are you? like what can you do for us you can tell that these people had they'd lost hope they had completely lost hope they thought that this is where they were, those the, this is where they were going to die anyways as i said 400 years in in egypt that word went down from generation to generation because we know in the book of hebrews joseph says to his sons do not let my bone perish in this place when god finally decides to take you out of this land take my bones with you that's how i know the word was given from generation to generation he passed it down so knowing the word is important knowing the word of god for your life where you find yourself it is so important because it's that word that would guide you. The Bible says the word of God is light onto my path and lamp onto my feet. And I had to meditate on that and actually just go to the Old Testament and see how... And, and I saw that it came alive through, obviously, um, Joseph, who's another beautiful example of God's... of the word of God, the, someone that preserved the word... In his case, God revealed to him that he was going to be, um, that his brothers were going to bow before him. It didn't make sense to him. This is someone who could interpret dreams. He had a dream. The ways of God. If you're standing from the outside, it doesn't make sense. Because <laughs> you're looking... The word was revealed to Abraham, right? That his descendants would be in captivity. No one else knew that. To Joseph, the word was revealed to him. He didn't understand it. He was very quick to share it with his brothers. And, um, and we know what happened to him. But again, standing from the outside, if you do not know the word of God, you would think that his ways don't make sense. You would complain and you would complain bitterly. You would think he doesn't love you and you think you're not part of his great plan. But God is doing something. He's doing something. You're just part of that peace in the entire plan. So with Joseph, we know that he ended up in Egypt. And if you're standing from the outside, you would look. We know how the story goes, right? But let's just take a moment and look at the story of Joseph as it goes along, as it unfolds. Wouldn't we just stand and look and say, this does not make sense. Like, what is God up to? Why is he sending Joseph to Egypt? Why is he sending Joseph? Why? Like, it doesn't make sense. But then again, if you take a step back and you look at everything, you would see that it's all part of his great plan. And we're part of it. That's why I said the word didn't start with you and it's not going to end with you. We are part of everything, everything. And it's so important that we know the word so that we can walk in it. Um, 
Joseph standing from the outside, we can see someone who loves God, someone who's passionate about God, because when Potiphar's wife was was um, tempting him, he said, what he said was, I would not, I would not do this and offend God. So to him, it was God that he would be offending if to him it was God that he would be offending if you know he had slept with Potiphar's wife but one would think okay for honoring God in that moment why is why did he end up in prison have we thought to ourselves that like God like why and I know, like even right now, right here, sometimes when we're praying, people tend to say, but God, I serve you. But God, I can only imagine. That's probably what Joseph said. Like, God, I honored you. I didn't sleep with Potiphar's wife. I didn't sleep with her for your sake. But even in the midst of all of that, he still ended up in prison. He still ended up in prison. In the plan of God, that's where God wanted him. But to us outsiders, it does not make sense. What is Joseph doing in prison? The word of God has gone before him. The word of God said that God, we know in Psalm 105 that the word of God said that Joseph would be the one to deliver the people of God from famine. So if we're wondering how did the, the, the children of God end up in Egypt, it's because God wanted to preserve his people. He had to take them out of where they are because he sees everything. He sees the end from the beginning. You're standing here and you can only see what you see. But that's why he is God. That's why he's the Alpha and the Omega. And sometimes we just have to see from his perspective. It's called um, sightedness. Having the sight of God. Seeing things from a different angle. The Bible says that when people say that there's a casting down, what do we say? Have you wondered why? But there's a casting down. There's famine in the land. Like everything in Nigeria does not make sense. But as people of God, should we join the people of the world and confess that it doesn't make sense? When in the eyes of God, it makes sense. It's part of his plan. Like the fact that Buhari is the president in this time, it's all part of his plan. It may not make sense to us. I digress a bit. Moses, same thing same thing and that the story of Moses is so profound and it blows my mind that God wanted Moses to be educated in the ways of Egyptians that God preserved the life of Moses on that water I was talking to Adolu about this um, I think I can't remember when but I was just trying to come into God's mind I was like, God, you have a plan. And I see it in the life of Moses. But anything could have happened to baby Moses on that water. Anything could have happened. Anything. They put him on River Nile where there are crocodiles, where there are monsters, beasts, marine beasts. But yet, the baby, nothing happened to him. The Bible says not one hair of your head will be touched and I see that in the life of Moses I'm like wow nothing touched Moses nothing the sound the sound of waters kept him calm because the Bible says that he cried when Pharaoh's daughter opened the basket that's when he started crying this is a baby that has probably not eaten for, for days I don't know how long, but I just know that Pharaoh's palace was up there and the Israelites were leaving 
down low, you know, in some deserted place. But the word of God kept Moses. And again, if you look at the story of Moses, you would think, ah, ah, Pharaoh, Pharaoh serves other gods. But yet, God sent Moses into the house of Pharaoh. Have you just taken a minute to think and meditate as to why God did that? God, why do you send Pharaoh there? Why did you send Moses to Pharaoh's house? It's funny how every other child at that time, every other child that was born around Moses' time, everybody died, all the boys. The girls lived, but the, the, the men, we know the Bible says that he killed, Pharaoh sent a decree to kill those boys every single male child that was born and that was you know satan's way of coming against the word of god when god had already given a word to moses and said that your descent to sorry to abraham and said that your descendants will be many and you will not even be able to count them but what did pharaoh do he came he came against it when god gives you a word the enemy would always contend against it and jesus is an example they had just baptized. Like, I, I wonder, maybe I should have actually said the ways of the enemy because they had just baptized Jesus. And God said, everybody heard. They said, this is my son, follow him. Everybody heard. Jesus heard. Satan heard. And the next thing, the Spirit of God leads Jesus into the wilderness. And then, what does Satan come and say? If you are the son of God, like, did you not hear God say that I am the son of God so you hear the word but is it deeply rooted inside your heart or are you blown and moved by every doctrine that comes so somebody pinches you ouch where is your stamina where is your capacity where is your depth in God where is your depth in God something happens you're very quick to say ah god abandoned me and it's the ways of god it's just mind-blowing even him he says it he said it in the book of isaiah he says my thoughts are not your thoughts my ways are not your ways just as the heaven is above the earth that is how my thoughts are as high sorry i hope i'm not misquoting it let me read it Let's just read it. Um, I think it's Isaiah 55 verse 8. For my thoughts are not your thoughts, nor are your ways my ways, says the Lord. For as the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways. My thoughts than your thoughts. I meditated on this this morning and I thought, what do you want us to learn from this scripture? And one thing he said to me, I want you to think like I think. Like stop saying God understands, God understands. No, how about you understand God? For once, you do something and you're like, ah, God understands, ah, God will understand. Ah, is he not God? He will understand, I'm only human. No, how about we change our way of thinking and align with that of God and we say for once, God I understand. And I see that. He says that when Samuel is about to anoint Eliab. Like God. His ways man. His ways. His ways. His ways. Two things. As I, as I just said that. I just remembered Abraham. When he's about to kill. I sacrifice Isaac. He was about to. But thank God he heard. Thank God he heard. Let's focus on Eliab. Samuel, um, we know that Samuel anointed King David. But again, the Bible, <laughs> when you're reading it, you know, it brings some, you're reading it because you know how it ends. But look at Samuel, who hears, who hears from God and then who goes to the house of Jesse looking for the next king god there's some people here god has given you instructions and for some reason 
you've run away you've 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 run away with the first instruction he gave you but then walking with god you realize that his instructions are step by step precept upon precept like it's not he doesn't give you everything at once and we see that in the life of abraham when he said leave your father and your mother's house to a land i will show you until abraham left that is when we know that he started communing with abraham but let's focus on Eliab. someone comes in and then sees Eliab. this is someone that anointed saul and we know that he's cried over saul because he knows that he got it wrong and he didn't want to do it but he had to God encourages Samuel and says, go, go, go to the house of Jesse. There's someone there. God doesn't say David. He stands before Eliab and he sees Eliab like Saul. He just, and he's about to anoint Eliab. But what does, what does, what does, what does God say to him? Like, I do not think like men think. Sometimes, the promises of God comes in a different package. And if you do not have the ears or the eyes of God, you would miss it. Just imagine someone had missed it and anointed Eliab in the place of David. Eliab looked like the person. He looked like the man. Imagine you're about to get married and the guy, he looks good. He sounds good. And you're, you're just carried away by everything. And you miss God. You miss God because God says, He looks at the heart. And we know Eliab's heart was wicked. We know. Because when David went to, when David went to the battlefield, what, did Eliab, what, does, what does Eliab say to David? Like, what are you doing here? <laughs> and I like the way you said it this morning. Please lend us your voice. I don't remember what I said, but I know that he said to. Let me see problem. I know that he said that Eliab turns to David and said, "What are you doing here? I know you, I know you just came to watch the fight, but Eliab himself." had not even stood up to the fight. So what is it that he thought David just wanted to be a participator in? Well, if you look at it in a more... Um, like, I have fun with scripture. I see it as a story, but I don't only see it as a story. I see it as a prophetic story. So I see that every single story has a message. Has a message. So I read it and it's, uh, sometimes it's entertaining to me. Eliab said whatever he said to David and the way he said it, he said it in a more basically Ilya was wicked and he couldn't have been the next king of Israel because his heart was wicked and his heart was not with God because if his heart was with God he would have stepped out in the battle and like there's so many things there's so many what ifs what ifs what ifs so let's just take a moment thank God for the <laughs> for the times you know he's you know you know <laughs> I don't need to say it you know, you know in your heart the things he saved you from, the person you would have married <laughs> or the job you would have taken. My, my friend was shared this with me years ago. He said that um, he heard the Lord say, leave your job. Then he left his job and then, you know, he got another offer and, you know, everything in him said he shouldn't take it. But then he was in a tight spot. He needed the job. He takes it couple of months or weeks down the line they fired him because the company um, didn't have money to pay him and this when he, the reason he took the job was because the salary was mind-blowing it was interesting and I'm just like did you pray about it I was like yeah he did and he felt that that was what the Lord said that the Lord said leave your job for this my point is hear the voice of God let the voice of God lead you step by step. The Bible says those who are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. And son speaks of maturity. You need to come into that place where you hear him. He says you would hear a voice telling you, turn to the left, turn to the right. Don't, don't, don't act in the flesh. 
because we know that it profiteth not. It doesn't, it doesn't, it doesn't help anybody. It doesn't. And you can look inwards. You can look inside of you and look at those times where you've decided, ah, I will do this by myself. <laughs> God, you are taking too long. Just, you know, how did it end up? Who did you disgrace or embarrass? Just, you know, just who did you come back to? Just look at those little moments where you have taken, your, taken charge of your own life. Submit to God. Study the word. Don't let the word of God depart from your mouth. Day and night, meditate on it. Let it guide you. Let it lead you. And the ways of God are super. He likes to show off. And I say this every time I come here. God loves to show off. God said, I would lay a table for you in the presence of your enemies. That's not a God that likes to show off. But you will get there if you're not patient. You will get there if you don't know the word. You will get there if you try and sort it out with your own understanding. You won't. It's the word of God that leads. It's the word of God that guides. It's the word of God that, that strengthens it's the word of God. And when Jesus said that, that the enemy, the God of this world, has blinded the minds of believers, I see it. I see it everywhere in scripture. And I see it in our own lives as well. We get carried away. Just ask God to open your eyes to see like he sees. You don't want to, to make that wrong move and, you know, kill Isaac or anoint Eliab he says I don't look at the heart I don't look at the outward appearance I beg your pardon I look at the heart he sees your heart he sees the heart there are 13 things you can't see on the surface that he's already seen let him lead you let him guide you let his word be that guiding light don't get carried away by life and miss the sign miss the turning sign or that still voice it's it's also funny that us his ways are not our ways honestly and i hope i've sufficiently made that point but one last thing elijah bible says that God comes to Elijah. How many times has God come to us and said, I want to speak to you. Go and stand on the mountain. Then you get to the mountain and you expect God to come in the earthquake or in the fire or in the wind. The Bible says that he was not in any of those things, but he was in that still voice, still, small voice. And the only way you won't miss that is if it is, is if you are not distracted. To be able to come into a place where you see God, you need to separate yourself from distractions. He would not have revealed himself to Abraham if Abraham was still in his father's house. He wouldn't have revealed himself to Moses if Moses was still in Egypt he needs you to step aside and even when Moses was taking care of the 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 flocks the um, his father-in-law's um, flock basically Bible says that God caught his attention by the burning bush and he left everything he left everything to go in the presence of God so we need to learn that, that when we come into the presence of God, it's God and us and no one else. Nothing around us. Giving him that time. Because at the end of the day, it's for our own good, honestly. It's for our own good. And the earlier we come into these things, the earlier we know his ways, the earlier we're sorted, honestly. Because I firmly believe that Joseph had a he had peace that nobody else had in the prison in the house of Pharaoh he had that peace 
he wasn't moved by the circumstances or situation he wasn't he knew he knew he knew that one day one day one day he didn't know when and the whole story is so emotional but we just thank God we thank God for God I don't think um, I don't think I I think I was talking about Moses and then I just moved on um, just to conclude on Moses actually let me just leave it like that let's just ask God to open our eyes to see like he sees we don't want to get carried away and make wrong investments let his word lead us to that fruitful place to that place where there is peace overwhelming peace fruitfulness understanding of the word the one that makes a way where there seems to be no way the one that likes to show off I love you so much God because one of the reasons because you like to show off you had to bring the Egyptians to the Red Sea to show them that they could not cross when they tried to the water took them you are a God that shows off and I know that you will show off with me the word is cooking and until then I'm developing capacity strength depth in the word depth in God for myself for this generation for the next generation for my children I'm not doing it for me because Joseph went through all he went through for the people of God Moses went through all he went through for the people of God thank you Lord thank you Lord I pray Lord that you would bring your people to that place where it's just you and them you and them and no other voices I pray that they hear you clearly in everything they do every decision they make they hear you 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 that you bring to remembrance the word that you have spoken over them you bring to remembrance that word which you have spoken over them that word oh Lord the way you see them and the purpose for which you have made them it is not too late you are the restorer you are one that reorganizes for in our favor you put everything in line man satanda lubra shupa satandish libranda sukamba zibrada jeka speak to your people oh god the way the, the way only you know how to that dream that desire in them remind them that it's from you and they cannot do it from the place of the flesh because you gave them that vision you gave them that vision and their destinies that are connected to that word they are destinies that are connected to that word I speak strength now because again what if Moses had decided he didn't want to do it what if Joseph had decided I have suffered too much I can't do it so Lord I speak strength into their bones Bible says strengthen your feeble knees strengthen those knees that shake are you strengthen it with the word strengthen it with the word of God Lord let your word be food just as we cannot go days without eating let it be so in the spirit that when we don't read the word Lord we don't have rest and peace to bring us to that place where we know that rest and peace comes 
from you. Jesus said that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. Every word. Let that word strengthen. Let that word give clarity, vision. Let that word place you where you need to be. And let that word give you the wisdom to know that this is indeed where I am meant to be. And let it lead you. He says, He would lead you for His righteous foot. He would lead you for sake of for the sake of his righteousness for the sake of his righteousness for righteousness sake he would lead you I'm trying to remember yes he would lead you into the path path and he says he will make your way prosperous you will prosper in all that you do you will bear fruit in and out of season that is the word of God. Jesus saw that fig tree and he knew what the word of the Father says that in and out of season you are meant to bear fruit. But that tree, the Bible says that in, in, in its natural state it wasn't bearing anything and God cursed it. Because it didn't align with what it, he was seeing. You will be like a tree that stands tall and strong, deeply rooted by the rivers of water. Kasa palibra da sutan dalish, labranda sukanda shibrando sianda dish, mahati kando silibrando shibro shatanda dish. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. In Jesus name amen amen Lord I just just want to thank you for your daughter you know, it's such a it's what I was just seeing was there such a simplicity and a purity to your heart for God the God is birthing you in this time because people need to see and know the beauty of what it is to love and be loved by God and you're such a beautiful reflection of that God you just pray for your daughter that you'll strengthen her in every single aspect and area of her life to be who you have called her to be in every single way, in every single room you have called her to, you'll give her the boldness and the courage to stand there without frills, without an attempt to over push anything, but to just present the beauty of the truth of the love of God in every single way you have called her to in the mighty name of Jesus Christ Amen but every